All right, so I just received this Top Dawn battery tester. This is the Arty Battery 101, and it's a conductance style battery tester. This doesn't have a big uh, load resistor in it that you load up, but these are becoming more and more popular. There's a bunch of different manufacturers. If you're not familiar with Top Dawn, uh, they've come onto the scene lately, uh, I don't know, past two or three years. They've been coming out with some pretty good stuff. They've got some pretty good scan tools and uh, other uh, other automotive tooling. Starting to get a pretty good reputation. So this tester will test the battery, the starter, and the alternator. So we're going to hook it up over here on the uh, GMC Sierra, and we're going we're gonna to go through. But first, we're going to uh, read a little bit here. So this will test AGM, uh, both flat blade battery, flat plate batteries, and spiral batteries, and gel batteries, and then of course your just standard uh, lead acid battery. Uh, it is polarity protected, so if you hook it up backwards, you're not going to hurt anything. You're not not the tester and not your vehicle. Um, the testing standards is cold cranking amps, BCI, cr regular cranking amps, MCA, G JIS, DIN, IEC, EN, SAE, and GB. More than likely, the only, t the only type of standard I've ever used is the cold cranking amp standard. Um, I don't know about these other standards and where or why you would use those. I'm assuming other countries, but I don't know. Of course, it does have multiple languages, English, Russian, Spanish, French, German, and Italian. It is made in uh, China, but let's take it out and take a quick look at it to start with. Okay, it does have a, uh, does have a little manual. Kind of gives you the basic rundown of what you need to know. Um, now one of the unique things about this that I'm curious to, to try out is this ripple test. Now a lot of people, I don't know how many times I've had people replace their battery only to find out that six months later the brand new battery is now bad. And what caused the battery to go bad in the first place is it had a bad diode. It was charging but it was inducing an AC uh, part of a AC sine wave into the battery, and that destroys batteries. So a ripple test is a very good test to be able to do, um, and most people don't do it. So I'm curious to see uh, if that, and now on here it actually shows like a little graph. Uh, I'm curious to see if it actually shows a graph on the, on the actual tool. Um, so let's go over here and let's go ahead and hook it up, and let's give this thing a try. One year limited warranty. Now the first thing I've noticed right now is I like the fact that the leads. It, it's kind of cooled right now. It's probably uh, it's probably about 68, maybe 68 degrees, maybe 70. But these leads are uh, like silicone rubber. They're very pliable. I hate tools that have that hard plastic. Uh, insulation that almost makes them brittle now of course this thing is powered by the battery itself you can see how small the unit is the uh, clamps are very nice so let's go over there and let's just give this thing a try let me get a let me get us a light because i'm sure we're going to need one And I had to watch the video. I wasn't sure what cranking uh, cranking amp this this battery was, so I had to watch the video that I did installing this battery. Uh, come on, where am I going to put my light? No, right there. Um, just so I'd know what the cranking amps were. So let's see, we're going to put you guys right here.
generally you want to hook the positive up first and then the negative but to be honest either way it'd probably be just fine it is a nice backlit display is this going to be better uh shows you the volts that might be better right there shows you the volts 12.15 this truck has been sitting for uh couple days so I'm going to be curious to see how it works so I'm just going to hit OK so you got four buttons you got OK up and down and then the back button first thing is battery test going to hit OK to that this is a regular flooded of course you see you've got AGM flat plate AGM spiral uh, gel and EFB um, I'm gonna have to look up EFB I'm not a hundred percent sure what EFB is I don't think it goes any yeah it's just those five so we're gonna hit OK to regular flooded cold cranking amp I'm gonna hit OK now you can this is where you can cycle through the different sorry about this light yeah, there we go cold cranking amp gonna hit OK to that uh, this was a 790 cold cranking amp battery so I'm gonna hit OK Okay, it says uh, good charging. Not sure exactly what good charging actually means, but I'm assuming that the battery is good. Healthy, 76%. It's actually got about 687 cold cranking amps, according to this uh, tool. Um, the internal resistance is 4.36 uh, mega ohms. And it's, uh, it, of course, the 790 is what I put in. That may be 4.36 milliohms. And let's see. Okay, nothing there. So, and like I say, this truck has been sitting. I'm assuming we'd probably get some different readings if I had just driven it. And, uh, and it was uh, freshly charged. Now, there's a cranking test, so we're going to do that. I'm going to try to set this to where you're going to be able to see it. Yeah, hold on. I see the timer's going down, so I'm going to have to start this over again. Okay, stand by. Okay, start in. Okay, so uh, took 2,064 milliseconds for the crank to happen and then for it to start up. The voltage dropped to 10.8 and according to this tool that is an uh, indication of a good cranking test. So the battery provided enough power, the starter started the truck right, um, didn't pull too much current, so all that's good. So let's go back. We're going to do a charging test now. Okay, uh, please start engine, press OK to continue. Yeah, and there's the ripple test. Increase RPM to 2500 RPM and keep it five seconds. Press OK to continue. Uh, I hope I can press OK and then go do that and it not fail the test. So I'm going to hit OK.
Okay, what do we got here? So it says, let me get, pull this camera up a little bit. Loaded, 14.64, that's, that's a really good charge rate. Unloaded, 14.65. Ripple, 12 millivolts, charging normal. So all that passed with no problem. Uh, review data. See what that shows. Okay, there's that. That's just the initial battery test. Of course, you got your language right here. And then about. That's the serial number of the device. I guess the firmware is up here. Uh, there is no... I take that back. There is a USB uh, connector, so I guess this is capable of having the firmware upgraded. So that's a very good thing. Anyway, that's about it. Um, the nice thing that that this does that the others don't that I've never seen anyway is this ripple test and we're not going to go through I'm not going to rev the engine up again but I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and we're just going to see what it what it does here at idle whenever you rev it up I think the ripple would actually get worse if it's if it's a problematic alternator so yeah, I think 13 millivolts. I can't remember what it was uh, earlier whenever it was revved up. You can see the uh, voltage is a little lower because it's, it's obviously at idle. But anyway, this is a very nice, uh, very nice little tester. I'll put a link to it if you're if you're interested in getting a, an alternator tester that does not only battery tests but alternator and starter. This might uh, this just might be the ticket. Anyway. That's about all I've got. You guys, hang in there. Take care.